Overfitting is when you fit to the noise as well as the signal. So in other words, is your model actually any good at all or are you fitting to noise? When you look at the graph on the left, you can see a good fit. There's some noise, but you get a line that cuts across them. When you look at the graph on the right, you see overfit. We're fitting to every single point and kind of even dipping up and down when it really probably doesn't make any sense. The model that's overfit will be less good for new data than the model that's a good fit because it's fitting to the signal, not the noise. To reduce overfitting, there's a few things you can do. You can use simpler models, uh, for example, ones with fewer variables. Uh, BIC and AIC get to this, as we talked about last week. This is kind of the idea of parsimony or Occam's razor. You can also use simpler models in terms of using less complex functions, which corresponds to minimum description length, which is something I'm not talking about in the rest of the class, but it's worth taking a look at it. These are kind of the two big ways to get towards reducing overfitting. Can you eliminate overfitting? No. Every model is overfit in some fashion. I'm sorry to tell you, everything you ever do in data mining will be overfit. But you can do things that are less harmfully overfit and less overfit. The question is, how bad and what are you overfit to? The way I like to think about controlling overfit is in terms of assessing generalizability. Does your model transfer to new contexts or is it overfit to a specific context, whatever that context is? So one way to look at generalizability is just to have a training set and a test set. You take your data and you split it into a training set and a test set, usually with the training set being a good bit bigger than the test set. This is good. Your models test on unseen data, but it uses your data unevenly. Some data points are training points, and some data points are test points, and never the two shall meet. Cross-validation is an alternative where you split data points into n, in this case 6, equal size groups. So we've taken our 54 data points and we've split them into 6 groups of 9 apiece. So in cross-validation, you're going to train on all the groups but one and test on the last group for each possible combination. So we're going to take the five blue groups, we're going to train on them, and then we're going to test on the red group. And then we're going to change which one's the red group. And we're going to train on these five blue groups and test on this red group, and so on for all possible combinations. How many groups do you want? We talked about this briefly earlier in the class. You could do k-fold, where you pick a number k and you split into this number of groups, like the case before with six-fold. Or you could do leave out one, where every data point's its own fold, and you repeatedly train on every data point except for one, and then test on that one. Which one's better? K-fold is quicker, and is preferred by some theoreticians. Leave out one is more stable, and it avoids the issue of how to select folds, which lead to stratification issues, which I'll talk about in a minute. The big thing is that when you use leave out one, you don't have to think about how you select your folds. But when you use k-fold, you really do. And different choices in how you select your folds can have big differences in terms of goodness. So there's a bunch of cross-validation variants. First one is flat cross-validation. In flat cross-validation, each point has equal chance of being placed into each fold. You'll also just see flat cross-validation called cross-validation. Another variant is student-level cross-validation, where folds are selected so that no student's data is represented in two folds. So in other words, a student is at any time either in a training fold or in a test fold. This allows you to test model generalizability to new students, which is often something we want. By contrast, flat cross-validation, or even stratified cross-validation, can just test model generalizability to new data from the same students. Think about it. Do you want to build a model that will work on new data from the same kids you have data on? Or do you want to build a model that will work for entirely new kids? Usually we want to build models for entirely new kids, and for this purpose, student-level cross-validation is important to do. Oftentimes a model will look great for flat cross-validation, but will completely bomb on student-level cross-validation. And if your goal is to work for new students, you better pay attention to that. Student-level cross-validation is usually seen as the minimum cross-validation needed in the Educational Data Mining Conference. Papers that don't pay attention to this issue are usually rejected. It's okay to explicitly choose a different cross-validation scheme and discuss that choice and defend that choice, but it's not okay to just ignore the issue and do whatever is easiest. And this becomes an issue especially if you're using tools like Weka that don't have support for student-level cross-validation. Weka is great, it's great for a ton of stuff, it just doesn't have this. It's easy to do this, by the way, with batch X validation in RapidMiner. Other levels are sometimes used for cross-validation. You'll see lesson or content level cross-validation. Does your model work on new content? School level cross-validation. Does your model work on kids from new schools? Demographic level. This one you don't see very often, but my group is starting to play with it. And we've actually seen that when you cross-validate the urban, suburban, and rural levels, models tend to work a lot better going across urban and suburban than they do when they're going from those to rural. 
That's a big important difference to pay attention to if you want your models to work on every kit. And finally, um, a variant of lesson or content is software package. Can your model even work on completely new learning systems? In some cases it can. The important consideration is, where do you want to be able to use your model? Do you want to be able to use your model on new students, on new schools, on new populations, or on new software content? However you want your model to generalize, be sure to cross-validate at that level. Because if you don't and you ignore this issue, you might have a model that doesn't work nearly as well as you think it does in the case you're using it. And that's a problem.